identical system hanging off two tripods. As you can see here on both of these systems, we have a rope hanging from some fixed ceiling, a mass hanging onto the first rope, then a second mass hanging down, a second rope hanging down from this mass, and then, well, there's this clip that we're going to pretend doesn't exist because it makes it easier for me to pull on it. So, all in all, hypothetically, we have this system for both of these situations. I'm going to pull on one of these systems very quickly and the other system very slowly, attempting to give the same amount of impulse. So, what do you think will happen? Of course, I don't think I'm that weak, so one of the strings is going to break, but can you predict which one is going to break first? Well, let's find out by pulling this one very quickly. Three, two, one. Well, it looks like the second rope broke well before the first. So, um, since this one is closer to me, we see the quick caused the second rope to break. Now, I'm going to pull this one very, very slowly. Well, 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 would you look at that? The first rope broke, and if I pick the remains up from the floor, the second rope is still attached. Theoretically, these two systems are the exact same. The only difference is that one is in fast motion and one is in slow motion. So, what's the difference? Well, it all comes down to essentially reaction time. Now, objects aren't alive, so they don't literally have reaction time, but let me explain what I mean by that. Now, in the ideal world, if I pull down, everything in this system reacts at once. But in the physical world, of course, if I pull down very quickly, the waves from me pulling down don't really have enough time to reach the mass, and then reach the rope above that. It's like they're not being notified that something is happening to the second string. So let's make what's going on right now clear by drawing free body diagrams for each of the three objects in the system. So first, we have rope one, the one that's hanging from our ceiling. Then we have the mass, and then we have rope 2. So, if I pull down on this string, let's first examine what's actually going on. The mass of this rope and that rope are negligible. Of course, if they couldn't hold up their own mass, they wouldn't be ropes. So, we're going to ignore the force of gravity on these two. Now, aside from that, the mass its force of gravity cannot be ignored. So, let's write the force of gravity as being, do you want me to pick a certain mass? Yes, uh, we need 200 grams. Okay, we so 0.2 times 10, so 2 newtons downward. Now, of course, as you saw from the system, the mass was not falling, which means there has to be some counterbalance to that force of gravity. And that counterbalance is the force of tension that's pulling it up from the first rope. And as you can tell, it's not exerting any force on the second rope. But it can exert it. Oh. So finally, what's really going on here with the second rope? Well, its force of gravity is negligible. This is the quick one. The only force that's acting on it is my sudden pull. And this sudden pull, of course, which we're going to say, well, I don't know how much force I exert exactly, but it's got to be pretty big, is enough to just break it. It's more than a rope can handle. 
every on rope has top, a tension limit. On the top, uh, give people a rope limit. I'm not going to make anything up. Uh, let's... So, every rope can only handle a finite amount of force pulling from either direction before it snaps. It can only apply so much tension. So, if the tension force is suddenly larger than what it can actually give, then the rope is going to snap. That's what's happening here. So, this probably still hasn't helped you understand why the slow motion one has the first rope break. Shouldn't it still be the same, since I'm applying the same amount of impulse, even if I'm not applying the same exact amount of force? Well, let's see here. If I pull down in the same exact spot, what's happening? Well, the entire system suddenly has time to react. The rope, so let's draw our two or three free body diagrams again. Rope two now essentially has time to react. Rope two now essentially has time to react. So it says, hello, mass. I need a force pulling me up because there's, sorry, not FG, a guy attempting to pull me down. So, since we are exerting a lower force that hasn't exactly made it snap yet, even though we're exerting the same amount of impulse, rope 2 is able to react and tell the mass above it to give it some tension. So, I don't know what this force of tension is going to be, but it has to be around the same as the pulling force. So now, the mass says, hey, rope one, I have to deal with the pulling force because rope two is calling for help, and I already have to deal with the force of gravity pulling me down. Can you help me out some here? And so, the mass only has a force of tension matching the force of gravity, as we saw from earlier. So, rope 1 says, oh yeah, I can try, but of course it has to match whatever's pulling downward. And that's not just FG, but the much larger F pull. And so, rope 1 now has a tension force pulling on it of Fg plus F pull. But as we saw from the quick experiment, Fg plus F pull is just too far beyond the rope's tension limit for it to take, and rope 1 snaps. So essentially, it's kind of like a human pyramid. And having to support everything below it, rope one can't take the heat. But if we isolate every rope two by doing the experiment very quickly, then the mass and rope one don't even have to support it. They don't know what's going on. And so rope two by itself snaps. It's kind of simple once you know what's going on. That's it. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you in the next one.